There was a guy that I met, a very famous singer. His name was Barry White. And he said, do what you love to do, and the money will follow. And then you'll get a call. I know this person. They need some help. And that person turns out to be Ice Cube. Being in Hollywood and being on the Dr. Phil show made it less scary. But I didn't realize it would be that productive. And that was just an amazing thing. I decided just to completely change my environment and travel around the world for two years. What matters is that you do the introspection and you look deep within yourself to figure out what matters to you. Drive is the relentless pursuit of a goal or a purpose. I would say it's that quality that makes you get up early and stay up late working on something that you feel passionate about. In the process of my son developing his motor skills, you see him wanting to get the object that's placed in front of him. He stares and then he just, he moves his arm and then he opens his fingers and it's just this long drawn out process and you're just, oh, you're like, you feel frustrated for him. But over a period of time, I just saw him continually reach and then eventually grab that object. And that just epitomizes what we need to do in order to reach our goals in life. When a person has drive, what we're really talking about is what kind of motor do they have? If you look at a car, you can't see the motor. You only see the hood. But up under that car is really what propels it forward. And everyone's motor is built a little differently. The individuals who have drive have special motors. That thing that pulls people forward is really an extrinsic motivation. It's some external factor that motivates them to do something, a reward, money. Money is probably the biggest extrinsic motivation that people have. The people who do something for the sake of doing it, people who have intrinsic motivation, those are the individuals who have the strongest drive. Drive is when you have a hobby and you can't stop doing it, you know. And all of a sudden that hobby turns into something that maybe you really want to do for money. You're going to feel lighter and you're going to feel like working hard and it's not going to feel like drudgery. And you're going to be excited about it. You're going to want to learn as much as you can. You'll be getting up early, staying up late. I've noticed that people who are intrinsically motivated, they derive energy from what it is that they do. They could be tired physically from doing whatever else it is. But once it's time to do whatever it is that is a purpose or a goal, the energy comes from nowhere. Now things are gonna happen. The car is gonna not only move forward, but it's gonna be able to move forward at a greater velocity. This is just why when people who are intrinsically motivated, they tend to be very energetic. It was really not something that I chose as a profession as much as by a, a process of elimination. There were no other attorneys in my family that I had ever heard of or met. You know, my mother was a school teacher, my father sold insurance. After college, I knew that I wanted to go further, and so I said, well, I'm not the brightest at math. Uh, I don't like the sight of blood, so I ruled out the medical profession. And that sort of left uh, the attorney and the legal profession staring at me. From the time that I was 10, I knew I wanted to get involved in the music business. Actually, the first thing I wanted to do was to become a professional football player. And then I had a father that kind of talked to me out of that. Then I wanted to get into the music business, and I said, you know, there's no reason why I can't do that. So I did that. Coming out of high school, taking classes, working in corporate America, managing people, starting my own company. It was always about careers. I've always been fascinated by what people do, what makes them do it. I've always been best suited in the role of providing people with guidance and support. In high school, there was never an issue of you know, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna be. It was only a matter of how I was gonna do it. As I got out of law school, and I, or even in law school, and started working in, in the field, that's when I started realizing I had drive, I had passion. It didn't matter how late I had to stay up to do something or how much work I had to do. I was really about my performance and hoping that I could get the best result for my clients. What matters is that you do the introspection and you look deep within yourself to figure out what matters to you, what motivates you. 
Where do you find your meaning? Where do you find your significance? What is your purpose? What is your passion? Because I was doing that all along, perhaps the aha moment came when I put my foot down. A lot of it is preparation because you won't get an opportunity if you don't have a certain skill set. The fact that I had stayed in school, that did well in college, and also went to law school, I graduated from Berkeley and had a pretty good uh, track record in terms of the jobs that I had held. You know, all of that was a, a background that positioned me to take advantage of opportunities that happen to come my way because people are traveling in different circles and they, they might remember you as being an entertainment lawyer in my case and then you'll get a call. I know this person, they need some help and that person turns out to be Ice Cube. The best way to position yourself is to find a role that allows you to be positioned in such a way to where you gain credibility and people can recognize the value that you have to offer to others. Always build and nurture relationships. And in the process of building and nurturing relationships, you're adding value to other people's lives. When I started teaching, I just looked at it as a way to sort of give back something. I was teaching in a local community college that wasn't far from my office, so I felt it would be a, a benefit to the students and I wasn't really focused on the benefit to me. As I have uh, come to realize, it's a tremendous benefit to me as well. I'm helping people discover the drive that you spoke of. I'm not concerned with the job. Although a job can be vital, it could be an integral part of building a career. But I'm concerned with people finding their authenticity, finding what their strengths and their talents are. In my career, the adversity that I faced really came from wanting to transition from the music industry out of the music industry. I didn't know exactly what I, how I was gonna make that transition, but I knew what I wanted to do. I spent some time thinking about it. And so I took a production assistant job at Dr. Phil. It was very influential in helping me to understand not only the importance of psychology, but how to use psychology in a very constructive way. Through my association with him and the different shows that I was involved in, I really saw how he was able to help people remove barriers to growth. And I started thinking, maybe I still stick to my mission, and so I decided to rebrand myself as a growth expert, someone who helps people grow professionally and personally. And that's happened several times in my life. One time I just shut my whole entire practice down, I went through a divorce, I got sued by a client, I had a car accident, I lost a couple of cl other clients just through attrition. It took a while before I realized, I said, things are, I said, what else is going to happen? This is pretty crazy. Maybe it's a good time just to shut my practice down because it's never going to be easier because all of a sudden now I had, you know, 30% of what was left anyway. So instead of trying to build it up and stay where I was, I decided just to completely change my environment and travel around the world for two years. That totally inspired me and I never regretted one single day of doing that. Most people who are driven make sacrifices. Sometimes the sacrifices are made unawaringly. I have had a lot of personal relationships, especially early on in my life, um, that were impacted negatively as a result of the drive that I had professionally. If you look at biographies of very successful people, uh, there's a lot of carnage. There's a lot of people that, uh, a lot of relationships that disintegrate. A lot of marriages that um, are short-lived. 
um, because that focus and being intrinsically motivated to do something that's greater than you, which means that that pursuit might be placed before the actual pursuit of the union, the goals that you have with regard to the, the, the person that you're with. And so uh, that has happened. Girlfriends, the first wife. I would say that definitely there, there are sacrifices that people will make who have drive. So sometimes you just have to look in your inner self and, and see what's going to make a, a difference for you. I just was always willing to sort of go against the common thought that, oh, you got to stay on this particular path and you can't, you kind of can't do that right now. Look, look all the things that you're accomplished where you are, you know, it'd be crazy to give that up. I felt much better having, uh, taking, essentially taking charge of my own destiny and uh, doing something that was really important to me and doing it, coming back you know, and then starting out again. I say, wow, that was incredible. You know, I actually did that. You know, I did what people their entire lives would love to do and they never do it. It's, it's given me more fuel. We talked about the fuel that you have in your tank on your drive. Well, I refueled by being on the Dr. Phil show and I emerged from that situation more confident, uh, more determined and more driven to fulfill my purpose. It was just a summer, but that's all it took. So what initially was one of the most challenging times, because I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, especially when you, that's all you've done. From the time that you're a 10 and you're like, this is what I want to do, and then you do it. That's the thing about reaching your goals. Now that you've done it and you don't want to do it anymore, now what? So I really didn't know. It was kind of scary for a quick moment, but being in Hollywood and being on the Dr. Phil show uh, made it less scary, but I didn't realize it would be that productive. Because I know what my own definition of success is, I'm not confused by definitions that other people have. The key thing is to identify your, your own definition uh, and not sort of adopt a definition that you've inherited from your parents or from your older brother or from television or from some other source because it may not really fit you. My version of what being successful means is to be able to live your own life in your own way, take care of your obligations and the people that you love. That's all I'd have to have. I try to do that on a daily basis. I don't try to wait for some future date. You know, I, I'm not going to measure my success by what happens in 10 years. I'm measuring it by how close I'm able to come to that every day. Survival for some people is their success. And some people who succeed aren't happy with that until they achieve a level of significance. And it's then that they feel successful. I think that drive leads to success, but I think that success is a very, very subjective thing. Success, by my definition, is when someone is true to who they are. They live life in accordance to their values and their beliefs. And that's a challenge, no matter how much or how little money you make, that's a challenge. So once you can do that, then you're successful. There's a guy that I met, a very famous singer, his name is Barry White. He had just released a book and I wanted to go to his book signing because I wanted to get my book signed. There were a lot of people there. I knew that if I pushed my way, uh, I could get him to sign my book and maybe spend some time with him. And I asked him just one question. What do I have to do in order to make money with my aspirations? And he said, do what you love to do and the money will follow. I said, but how? I mean, you know, just like, well, is there something that you think that I should do to go ahead and turn it up, you know, you know, turn up the volume a little bit more to generate more income? He said, do what you do 
Do it to the best of your ability. Always do it better than you're doing it now and you will get paid. All that matters is that you do enough work internally to make the decision that puts you on the path. And then once you're on that path, it's all about what type of motor do you have under your hood that will take you down that road so that you can relentlessly pursue your purpose and your goals. Yeah, yeah, he's got to be right.